Our day begins in contemplation. We are contemplative active sisters. So our day actually begins in silence. And to most people, silence sounds like something empty, but to us, it's not. To us, silence is a fullness where we make space to hear God's voice and to hear what he's saying to us. Then when we do come together to pray, which is around six o'clock in the morning, the first words we say are, Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may proclaim your praise. And those words summarize what it means to be a contemplative active sister. Because when we do act and when we do speak, we want all our words and actions to be for the praise of God's glory. So after we pray morning prayer together, we go to the Holy Mass at 645. We say that Mass is the source and summit of our life. Come back from Mass, we have a period of meditation where we pray with the Word of God, with Holy Scripture, and we let God's Word sink into our hearts. And then having been fed with Jesus' body in the Eucharist and on the Word of God, we're able to take that spirit of the Gospel into our workplace and share it with everybody, hopefully, that we touch and that we meet. Our sisters have different apostolates. Our founder, St. Norbert, taught us that we should be prepared for every good work. That means that we want to do the work of the Universal Church, which is the sanctification of souls, starting with our own. And we do that in whatever way the needs of our local church present themselves. So in our parish, we have different ministries. We have a poverty program, which is run by one of the sisters that helps out needy families in our area. We have a parish bookstore where sisters help not only to sell things, but also to speak to people and be present. One of our sisters works in the sacristy, helping take care of Jesus's linens, his laundry, and some of the some of the work there. My job is to be in the school with another another of our sisters, and that's a lot of fun, especially because we work with young, mostly younger children, the TK and the kindergarten classes. And it also is very touching to realize that I'm fulfilling the desire of Jesus to let the children come to him. He has a special place in his heart for the little ones of that, I'm sure, and it must bring him a lot of joy that they're getting closer to him. We come back from the school around 3.30 in the afternoon and we pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy together. And then in our afternoons, we have different activities throughout the week. Some days we'll have classes. Some days we have recreation together. Our favorite, favorite thing to play together is basketball. We do like, we like to play basketball quite a bit especially when our sisters from the Formation House are with us and we really get intense. Most days we'll pray the rosary together in the afternoon. At six o'clock we have dinner together. First we have a period of spiritual reading where we listen to a spiritual book and that nourishes our souls while we're nourishing our bodies. At 7 p.m. we have holy hour. We get to have that quiet time just to pray and be close to Jesus and unite ourselves to him and talk to him about what's happened. And then we also pray Vespers during that time. At 8 p.m. we have Compline, which is night prayer. During Compline, we also have what's called the Examine Prayer. And that's a period where we reflect on our day and try to see it the way God sees it, to see how he showed us his blessings and his love throughout the day and how we in turn have responded to him. And after Compline, then we have just some time to do whatever we need to do to get ready for the next day. And then lights out and we're ready for tomorrow. A Norbertine sister is primarily a woman in a deep relationship with Jesus and in particular with Jesus in the Eucharist. St. Norbert, our founder, had the dream or the vision, you might say, of forming religious communities that would live like the first apostles did in Jerusalem. He called it the apostolic life. And we know that they were focused primarily on Jesus celebrating the breaking of the bread in their homes, meaning the Holy Mass, and then on the prayers. And for us, our common prayer together, the Liturgy of the Hours, is primarily how we express our unity. And it's really a, the most important part of our mission, our prayer together. So we dedicate a lot of time and energy into making our liturgical prayer very beautiful. We study Latin and Gregorian chant. <laughs> 
Also, the cross is a very important part of our charism because the mystery of the Eucharist is always one with the mystery of the cross. We also want to proclaim the joy of the resurrection. And primarily the way we do that is by our witness as one community, the witness of our unity. Personally, I, I don't think there's anything else that says Jesus is alive, Jesus is real, than to look over and see a group of people, a group of Christians that really authentically love each other. My own vocation really began when I fell in love with Jesus in the Eucharist. Most of my childhood I felt like I might have a religious vocation. Not that I really understood what that meant or that I was a holy child because I definitely wasn't. There was though something in my heart that just told me I want to belong to God and I want to serve Him and be for Him only, do His will. So it came as no shock that I was discerning more and more. As a teenager though, it became harder for me to see my vocation because it was hard for me at that point to believe that God really wanted me to be happy. I was dealing with some really low self-esteem and a lot of guilt. And at that point in my life, my vocation became rather blurred, I'd say. It was hard for me to really believe that it was something good that God wanted for me. But whenever I would be in adoration and I would be before Him in the Blessed Sacrament, those moments were very healing and very transforming because I felt that He loved me no matter what. And if God would be willing to come, and be there in the holes just for me, just to be with me, then he must have something good in mind for me. And I remember one particular visit, it was on a first Friday, where I came to adoration and spent an hour and then two hours and just stayed with him so long because I felt like I could not get enough of him. I couldn't get enough of being in his presence and just just looking at him and knowing that he was looking at me and accepting me as I was. And in that moment of prayer, I really heard him say, will you be mine in my heart? I heard him say, will you be mine? And just to know that he was healing me brought a lot of healing and joy, deep joy. So. I just said yes with all my heart because how can you say no to that? And God really used the desires that were already in my heart for a Norbertine spirituality and for an apostolic life that guided me exactly to the Norbertine sisters. And it happened so providentially that as I was preparing to really discern seriously my vocation, the Norbertine sisters were coming to the, to the United States to start our house. So. He kind of just put us together, and when they were ready to accept vocations, I just went. It felt very strongly it was God's will for me and that He created me for, for this congregation. So I've been a junior now several years, and every day with Jesus is better than the last one. What I would say to anyone considering a religious vocation and in discernment is begin that habit of daily prayer. And don't be afraid, as you're building that relationship with Him, to let Him ask the question, what do you seek? What do you really want? And then in response, don't be afraid to ask Him the question, Lord, what is your will? What do you want from me? It can also be very helpful to have a spiritual director. We often have a lot of different desires in our hearts. Some of them are from God and some of them might be from our more human side. And it can be very beneficial to have somebody who can look at those desires and see them objectively and kind of steer you where God might be actually leading you. And finally, and most importantly, consecrate yourself to Mary. Give Mary everything you have and everything you are because she knows more than anyone what can make you truly happy and how to lead you to that lasting joy and peace that comes from living with Jesus in whatever vocation. Just give everything to your mother. She won't let you down.